First step in taking the capture is to create a new project. So I'll call this demo project. And after that, we want to tell the system what lens and what camera we're using. In this case, we're using the Canon T5i. And then I'm going to select the MPE 1x setting, which is what I'm currently using. It automatically fills in the width of your field of view and the height and also the depth of field. From here, we want to tell it what is the boundary of the area to capture. In this case, we want to set the left, the right, the top, and the bottom, and also the high and low focus. So we start by moving the system. I'll turn live view on so I can see what, what I'm doing. And I will move to where I know the farthest left portion of my subject is that I want to capture and I'll center that in the image. I'll then set my left boundary, then move it to the right side, <clears throat> then I will move it to the topmost portion and I believe that is right about there. Whoops, let me go back. Right about there, that's my top. And then looking at my subject, I think the bottom is right down here. So I'll set the bottom boundary. Then the next step is a little tricky. You have to tell what on your subject is the highest point of focus and what is the lowest point of focus. So in this case, I know that my lowest point is probably right about there. So I'm going to set that to my low. And then I also know that the highest point is probably the abdomen. And I'm going to go to that area here on the screen. And I will move up until that comes into focus. And I see his legs there. And we'll, we'll set that right at about the highest point of the focus there. Okay, from there, it's going to calculate how many images are needed to capture this, this subject. In this case, it's going to take 13 rows, 12 columns, and 32 stacks each. The next step is I'm going to add the project to the queue. And then when I click Display Capture Grid, it's going to show me all the images that it's going to take. In this case, there are my 32 stacks and all of the positions that it's going to take in order to capture the entire um, subject. So from here, I want to test my exposure. So I'm going to turn Live View off. I'm going to adjust any lighting that I think I might need to do. And I'm going to check to see how my lighting looks in different areas of the subject. So there's where the abdomen is. I might go down to the bottom here and Take another image. Okay. So in this case, what I'm looking for on the histograms is to make sure that I don't have whites that are being cropped out of the, the spectrum, and also that my darks aren't also off the spectrum. So it should be nicely squared in the middle. If I want to adjust the exposure, I can do it two ways. I can either adjust the final exposure settings or I can adjust the lighting. I usually typically only change the ISO. If I did this in this case and I take another test photo, you'll notice that it's visibly darker. And vice versa, if I went up to a different ISO, it's going to be too bright now. So I'm going to go back to my 200 and go with that. So you can adjust mainly the ISO and also the lighting position and the strength of the flash. From here, I'm going to decide how much overlap do I want. I'm going to use about 35% overlap. On Whenever I'm using the MPE lens, I use about this amount of overlap. If I use a telecentric lens, then I can get away with a little bit less. And we can go over that in another video. 
So if all of that looks correct, I'll update my project. Now it says it'll take about 7,200 photos to capture everything. And that's because my overlap changed. So that increased how many images are needed. If I want a preview to see what is going to happen when I run this image, I can simply click camera bypass and turn live view on and then hit run and it'll go to the first part of the image and it will step through each position in the sequence. So once it goes through this stack, it'll move to the next one. And this is a handy tool in order to make sure that what you're going to capture and spend all that time waiting for it to capture is actually going to be what you want. So I can then also go to any other part of the image. So say I want to go to the middle and see how that's going to work. I can scroll to that area of the sequence and take a look at what it's going to capture there. And what I'm looking for is to make sure that it captures everything that I want to in, in focus. If I need to adjust anything, I can reset the boundary and start the process over. Let's say that that looks correct. All you have to do is select the project, undo camera bypass, and hit go. So for 7,200 photos, it'll take approximately, uh, probably about five to six hours. It'll tell you how long it's going to do it in, in the little window here. I'm on high speed mode, which gives me about two and a half hours to three hours left. If I was using not high speed mode, it might take five or six hours.